Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today I want to talk to you about the Gennard Tools CST1900. This cable stripper will do cables from 3 16 of an inch all the way up to 1 and 1 8. They do have a larger size, which I'll mention a little bit later. But uh, I want to tell you why I got this cable stripper because for the longest time I just used my cable cutters. I do a lot of van and RV power systems and the cable cutters work pretty well for the welding cable, the marine cable, but um, those got a little bit dull and um, I tend to spin around the cable a few too many times and I end up cutting into the copper and uh, then with large shore power cables like this, this is a 50 amp four conductor cable, the cable cutters could not fit around this, it's too big and um, so I eventually broke down and got the Gennard. It's going to have a blade depth that you can micro adjust and you can set it for the exact thickness of your cable insulation. Make sure you don't cut into those inner conductors. And then if you're cutting a lot of cables or stripping a lot of cables that are having the same jacket, you can do it really quickly and not worry about cutting in and damaging those inner conductors. So it is definitely a tool that's gonna to give you some precision and some speed if you're doing a lot of cable stripping. But uh, with that, let's go ahead and zoom in and I'll show you how to use it. So when you're ready to make your cut in a particular cable, what you wanna do is check the blade depth. You can see the little blade in there and if you need to adjust it up or down, just roll the wheel clockwise or counterclockwise and then when you think you've got it, just go ahead and check it against the thickness of the insulation. And this one looks good. Let's go ahead and cut the welding cable first. We'll go back as far as we need to go and you're going to spin it three to five times. And then what's kind of cool is you can rotate the machine 90 degrees. See the label rotate there? and it actually rotates the blade and you can drag it down the cable and put a slit in the cable. And it's good to make a little bit more shallow cut as you would expect because if you go too deep, you're gonna cut into the conductors. So oftentimes I'll cut it shallow and then just kind of bend it back and forth to make the final break in the insulation and you can see we did have a uh, slit all the way down the material. You can see the, uh, the slit there in the jacket. But uh, that is our strip job. We did not cut any of the tiny 30 gauge strands off of there. So pretty clean. Let's move on to this four conductor cable. So this jacket thickness is about the same. I have to say the jacket thickness does vary a little bit more than the welding cable. So we'll see what we can do, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the blade depth. Actually, let's back up the blade depth a little bit. So we'll just roll the wheel. <laughs> and I may have to fight it to get it off of there, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. So same deal, we're gonna go around three to five times. We'll do five, what is that? Three, four, five. And then we're gonna rotate it 90 and drag it down the material. I've noticed the, um, the slit down the material works a little bit better on the thicker cables. On the tiny cables like that, sometimes the slit, the cable doesn't always align directly over the blade and um, you can cut around the cable, but when you drag it down those tiny cables, sometimes it doesn't do a good slit. But uh, let's check our large cable here. As I said, I uh, cut it kind of shallow and then you can just kind of finish it by uh, bending it. And uh, let's see if we can find the slit. You can see the slit down the length of the material Honestly, we're so close to the end here, it's almost not worth slitting it, but if you had to go down a long distance, you might want to put the slit so you could peel it apart. But at this point, it's better just to break it. 
do the final break and go ahead and pull it off. Let's see. Actually, it looks like it's caught up right there for some reason. I'm gonna go ahead and do another slit here. There we go, that was a good one. You can see the slit. As I said, the insulation thickness varies. Oh, there's our problem. It was actually bonded to the cable inside. All right. <laughs> Well, that did not go as smoothly as I would have liked, but uh, you can see our uh, conductors in there are safe and we have not cut into them. We would just come in with some scissors and uh, trim off this nylon rope material and uh, we have a nice clean uh, strip job around the jacket. One more thing I want to show you using this small cable here is if we pop up the machine you can see it pops up just a little bit. What that did is it rotated the blade 45 degrees and now it'll cut a spiral around the insulation. And this actually works really nicely on this small cable. And uh, let's see, we'll get it to go towards the end here. Our depth of cut is a little bit too much but uh, you can see if you need to cut a spiral in your insulation material, it will also do that. Now, if you want help with your overall power system, not just your cabling, I have a resource that you may be interested in called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. It's got a discussion of the three major charging sources you're gonna find in vans and RVs, which are solar, shore, and alternator power. It's going to talk about how they each excel in certain areas, but at other times they are each going to falter. But when you bring them together in a holistic power strategy, they're going to balance each other out and it's going to make sure that you're covered no matter where you go out on the road so you can enjoy what you went out there to do and you're not going to be worried about running out of power. There's also a discussion about different battery types and the strengths and weaknesses of those. That's going to help you narrow in on which battery type is going to be right for your project. And then lastly, there is a really cool diagram that's going to show essentially your entire system on one page is going to show the three major charging sources at the top and how that power makes its way through the system to charge your battery bank and then how it gets distributed to your end devices such as your microwave or your cell phone. For instance, how does the alternator power come through the system and end up charging your cell phone? So it's a really illuminating diagram that I think you'll find useful. To grab your own copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet, all you need to do is click the link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. So I wanted to say one more thing about the Gennard. The CST1900 is what I have here. This is the small one. They have the CST4000, which is going to do cables between three quarter diameter and inch and five eighths diameter. Honestly, that is way larger than I need. <laughs> so the CST1900 is what I recommend for the cable sizes that you saw here today. But uh, hopefully that was useful and is an extra clean way to cut your cables without cutting into the conductors or at least it's going to speed up your process. So that's my review of the CST1900. Thanks for watching. Again, grab your copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. Just click that link below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.